Hello guys, today we are going to discussing some changes and facts to Apple new MacBook Air M3. So there are two main updates to the new device, but before starting, please make sure to subscribe if you are Apple fan and want more stuff, then this video is for you. So at first, different outer coating that's supposed to resist fingerprints better. However, the coating doesn't seem to make much of a difference in preventing fingerprints. It's still better to use a skin or case to protect the device and hide fingerprints effectively. The other big update is the new M3 chip inside. Apple tends to use this chip across various devices. It was first in introduced in October last year and was quickly adopted in the new iMac and MacBook Pro models, including the M3 Pro and M3 Max variants. So it's the latest Apple Silicon, the third generation of its kind. So now we're finally seeing the new base M3 chip in the latest MacBook Air. It's a bit puzzling why it takes Apple so long to roll out these updates across their product line, especially when it's essentially the same chip used everywhere else. The MacBook Air has always been popular as the entry-level Mac, but this time it's not as straightforward to recommend for two reasons. So now we're finally seeing the new base M3 chip in the latest MacBook Air. It's a bit puzzling why it takes Apple so long to roll out these updates across their product line, especially when it's essentially the same chip used everywhere else. The MacBook Air has always been popular as the entry-level Mac, but this time it's not as straightforward to recommend for two reasons. Performance-wise, the new M3 chip delivers as expected, with benchmarks showing around a 10 to 20% improvement over the M2 chip, especially noticeable in graphics performance with features like ray tracing. This makes tasks like rendering noticeably faster. Additionally, MacBook Airs, particularly the 15-inch model, continue to excel in battery life. The M3 chip also brings improvements in storage speed, addressing concerns from the previous M2 generation, where the base model had slower storage. But if you look back at M2, the base 256 gigabytes model used a single SSD module instead of two SSDs. Long story short, that storage module was way slower than M1, like 50% slower on paper. Would you have noticed if nobody told you and had never benchmarked it? Maybe, possibly not, but obviously it's a bummer having way slower storage on a new M2. And that extra time transferring large files, that adds up over time. With the M3, even base storage models offer enhanced performance, making tasks like file transfers quicker and more efficient. So I'm happy to report that I've seen really good benchmarks on the base storage of the M3 Air. It appears that they fixed it, which is awesome. So despite the impressive performance and improvements in storage speed with the M3 MacBook Air, there's a twist. Apple not only introduced the M3 version, but also dropped the price of the M2 model by a hundred bucks while discontinuing the M1 variant. This change complicates the recommendation process for the MacBook Air, as now there are multiple options with different price points and capabilities to consider. So now, the lineup is M3 MacBook Air, which starts at $1,099, then M2 MacBook Air, which starts at $999, and then M1. It's kind of gone from Apple, but you can still find stock. Apple tends to charge a premium for even basic upgrades, which can be frustrating. With Apple Silicon computers, everything is integrated into a single chip, meaning upgrades aren't possible after purchase. So if you plan to keep your device for a while, it's tempting to opt for higher specs up front for future proofing. However, Apple's pricing for these upgrades can feel exorbitant, making the base price seem misleading. For instance, the 2024 MacBook Air starts with just 8GB of shared RAM and 256GB of storage. Now, ignoring the fact that the phone I'm using also has more than 8 gigs of RAM and 256GB of storage, the cost of upgrading the MacBook Air's RAM and storage can be quite steep. For example, upgrading from 8 gigs to 16 gigabyte of RAM costs an extra $200. And bumping up from 256 gigs to 512 gigs of storage adds another $200 to the bill. True, for basic tasks, 8 gigs of shared memory is generally sufficient. In fact, in everyday use, you often won't even come close to maxing out memory usage. It's only when you're dealing with more demanding tasks, like media encoding, exporting, or gaming, that having more memory becomes crucial. If you're someone who primarily uses your laptop for everyday tasks, 
like browsing the web, streaming, or office work, the new M3 MacBook Air might not be the best choice for you. You can save money by opting for the M2 MacBook Air, which is perfectly capable for these tasks. Unless you specifically need features like a brighter display, MagSafe, or enhanced external display support, sticking with the M2 model could be a more cost-effective option. So clearly M3 is a much more capable overall chip and brings the floor of a laptop up. But the way I see it, what Apple Silicon has done to Apple's lineup is it's brought down the minimum level of machine that you can get away with doing your workflow. Does that make sense? So like me, if you want to edit a lot of videos and need a powerful machine for Final Cut Pro and that sort of stuff, right? Then in market, there are multiple choices for you to go with in budget-friendly devices. And the same sort of thing applies if you're doing like gaming stuff or if you have a whole bunch of coding and heavy maybe even just encoding photos or whatever you're doing at that level, you'd typically rely on a MacBook Pro. But with these new chips and with Apple Silicon, you can do that on a high-end MacBook Air, which is, again, a pretty sweet enabler. So that's what the new M3 MacBook Air is. If you do that sort of stuff, it's an amazing computer. It should be on your short list. Great all around. Easy to recommend. But again, if you're doing the lightweight normal stuff and you need a MacBook Air, don't get this one. Get the cheaper one. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.